Part of the responsibility of designing somebody's home as architects is to really take the time to understand how they live and what their needs are and how they want to live every day. They wanted something that was kind of innovative and experimental and they wanted to try out things that hadn't been done before. So the client's brief was really about a big house but with a little budget and about creating a large amount of living spaces that were connected to the gardens but at the same time creating five bedrooms. We just kept our necessities quite minimal, which is the number of rooms, open space and light. It was really a fascinating process. We both actively tried to give as open a brief to the architects as possible because we felt that that's kind of the compromise. So we might not have the best money, but we'll be as open to your ideas and open to the architect's creativity as we could be. When we first started working with Tom and Amandine, when we visited their house, uh, it was full of plants and greenery, and it was very obvious that, that was something that was part of how they live day to day. Um, so that became quite an important part of the brief and design point for this house. One of the favourite elements of the house is the constant connection to nature. So be it through the front sliding doors or these windows or the roof light, we've always got a connection with what's going on outside. And essentially the gardens just feel like extensions of our living space. We sat down with them for probably about two or three hours, just talking about the spaces, how they lived, the difficulties of where they were living at that particular point and what they'd hoped for and what they were going to live in. Working with the budget was a really interesting constraint on this project. There was a, a lot of consideration about the kind of the judiciousness of how we spend that budget and how we spend it intelligently. So the house is constructed using cross-laminated timber or CLT, which gives it structural rigidity. CLT itself, the carbon footprint, is actually carbon negative. So that actually helps to offset some of the other elements which are more unavoidably carbon heavy. When I walked into the house for the first time, I really remember that feeling of light and how the light changes throughout the day and how the bamboo gives us privacy to shield us from the neighbours, so it feels light until you want to close the curtains to go to sleep. And I think that's a real privilege to have that in London because we are surrounded by neighbours. And I love that about living in this house. My favourite space is definitely the, the front of the house. The idea that all of the screens can be totally closed up and feel quite kind of insular. On the other hand, it can be totally opened up and kind of expose all the bamboo kind of hanging out in quite a wild and raw kind of way. Basically, the plan of the house is just a block form, which also made it very efficient and relatively simple to construct. So they're not spending money on, on dressing and plastering and plasterboarding and things like that. And actually that informed quite a lot of the aesthetic of the house. We've used materials in an unusual way, so the cladding externally is an agricultural roofing sheet. There's also things like the, the flooring upstairs, which is a, a cork rubber normally used in gaskets. And we've done quite a few unusual details, such as we've cut the doors straight into the cross-laminated timber walls themselves. So we've done away with all door frames and things like that. It made a challenge to make us kind of uh, more creative with materials and how we might use them. What? I thought I really didn't want, and I'm glad now I have, is the broken plan. I just didn't understand it. And the other thing is the curtains. We thought it would be an absolute nightmare, and I love the curtains <laughs> um, now. And I love that we can close the living room off, and in the winter particularly, that it makes it such a cosy little space. So those were the two things that they knew we needed and we would ultimately want. That collaboration was very, very helpful. I think these types of devices are really helpful to begin to kind of open the space up and close the space down. I wanted a house that flows well and that is easy to live in as a family and practically that means easy cleaning, easy tidying, all those things that make a space lovely to be in without being hard work. My favourite space in the house is the central atrium space, which we affectionately call the Tottenham Riyadh. It not only brings light in, um, in and makes this kind of quite awesome double height space in the centre of the house, but it also connects all of the living spaces together. So for example, if the kids are playing upstairs, Tom and Amandine can still see and hear them. It's encouraged the everyday togetherness of the family, but without feeling on top of each other. We don't feel crowded, but we still feel connected. The narrative from many sources was very much, this is 
a very silly decision. It's ridiculous that you're going to try and build a house in London while you're pregnant without huge pots of money. And we very quickly were drawn to Claire and Nick and the team at Hayhurst uh, because of their ability to kind of speak the truth and, and, and say that actually self-building is completely feasible and it's completely doable with the right team and the right kind of hand-holding, I guess. I think as architects it's always really satisfying to see the end result, seeing it being lived in and used. In a nutshell, a fun-filled, bright, joyous family home. Low budget, super eco and a bit pop.